Extremely painful menstrual cramps, heavy bleeding, constant digestive issues and chronic pelvic pain are some of the common symptoms between endometriosis and adenomyosis. While both of these conditions share a lot of symptoms, endometriosis and adenomyosis are two different conditions that severely challenge the fertility and well-being of a woman. Hi, this is Nidhi Bansal here from Medhya Herbals. We help women to gain health with all natural and holistic principles of Ayurveda. And in this video, I will share with you the differences and similarities between adenomyosis and endometriosis, an Ayurvedic natural solution to find relief from both of these conditions without surgery. So let's get started. The endometrial tissue that lines the inner walls of the uterus is called endometrium. It grows in the follicular phase of each menstrual cycle under the action of reproductive hormone estrogen to support the implantation of the fertilized egg and also to support the growth of the fetus. However, if pregnancy doesn't occur, then this endometrium breaks down and sheds under the action of changing hormones with your menstrual cycle. And it comes out as menstrual flow during normal menstruation. However, in case of adenomyosis and endometriosis, this endometrial lining starts to grow in different parts of the uterus. For example, in adenomyosis, this endometrium starts to penetrate the inner walls of the uterus. Thus, it makes the uterus inflamed and thick. That's why adenomyosis is often termed as a condition of bulky uterus or irregular uterus because the endometrial cells are penetrated in different parts of the uterine walls. However, in case of endometriosis, these endometrial cells, they start to grow on the outer walls of the uterus, on the ovaries or on different parts of the reproductive system organs in the abdominal cavity. So you see the difference between adenomyosis and endometriosis is really where the tissue is growing. In adenomyosis, the tissue is really starting to penetrate deeper into the uterine walls, thus making it inflamed and creating different abnormalities. But in endometriosis, all of this endometrial tissue is really growing outside. Now for both adenomyosis and endometriosis, the endometrial tissue that are responding and growing with increasing levels of estrogen in the body through each menstrual cycle have really no way of leaving out the body. They grow and bleed inside. For example, in adenomyosis, all of these tissues are really bleeding inside the uterine walls, thus making it more inflamed, creating extremely painful periods. But in case of endometriosis, all of these endometrial tissues are growing outside the uterus they are not really leaving with the normal menstrual flow that's why there is so much pain inflammation and sometimes education because as these endometrial tissues start to grow and the resultant bleeding starts to clot down these start to create adhesions inside the abdominal cavity that's why a large majority of women with endometriosis have difficulties around their belly area because it gets inflamed as a result of this external tissue and blood that is lying around now in terms of symptoms, both adenomyosis and endometriosis lead to common symptoms as we just saw. Some of the common symptoms of adenomyosis and endometriosis are extreme pain in your pelvic area due to these endometrial cells which are responding, growing and bleeding during your menstrual cycle. Also, there are a lot of digestive issues such as bloating, irregular digestive fire, diarrhea, constipation and constant struggle with stomach distension and pain around the area. One may also experience chronic pelvic pain, pain that radiates to the upper thigh area. Also pain during urination, bowel movement and during sexual intercourse are very common symptoms of adenomyosis and endometriosis. One may also struggle with infertility issues such as difficulty in conceiving miscarriages, inability to take pregnancy to full term and also struggle with the health of the newborn. Menstrual disorders such as short menstrual cycle, heavy bleeding, irregular periods are very common as multiple hormones also get disturbed in both adenomyosis and endometriosis. Fatigue, nausea, vomiting, problems with sleeping and emotional distress more so because of the pain and other symptoms that a woman is going through and also due to the hormonal changes that have taken place inside the body. Together they really affect the emotional and mental health of the patient causing depression, severe anxiety and loneliness. 
Now both adenomyosis and endometriosis are progressive disorders. That means they start at a certain stage where you may experience no or mild symptoms. However, if the conditions are not treated in time, they lead to aggravated symptoms and spread of the endometrial tissues. For example, adenomyosis may begin with endometrial tissues growing in one part of the uterus or in small region. But with advanced stage of adenomyosis, the progression of this endometrial tissues happen throughout the uterus. It becomes bulky and inflamed and creates a lot of pressure in the organs below it. For example, the urinary system, the digestive system organs. And for endometriosis, it may begin with few cysts around your uterus. However, as it progresses, it may lead to a lot of sticky adhesions and presence of endometrial cyst around different parts of the abdominal cavity organs, around your stomach, around your urinary system, around your digestive system tracts, for example, the small intestine and the large intestine. This is how the differences in the symptoms may appear between adenomyosis and endometriosis as well during advanced stages. Also, in a number of cases, both endometriosis and adenomyosis may be present in women. For that case, the severity and the pain of the symptoms will be a lot because inflammation, pain and this growth of the endometrial cells is happening throughout inside the uterus, on the walls of the uterus, outside and even in the abdominal cavity. Both adenomyosis and endometriosis are diagnosed through a number of tests which involve physical examination as well as imaging techniques involving laparoscopy, MRI or ultrasounds. In terms of treatment, endometrial cysts and cells in endometriosis can be removed by surgery by specifically picking up those adhesions and tissues that are growing outside the uterus. For advanced stage adenomyosis, usually hysterectomy is prescribed. And in some cases, hormonal therapy is advised. Also, painkillers, NSAIDs and steroids are often prescribed to women to find relief from the pain that they are going through. However, all of these treatment options involve invasive techniques and use of more chemicals that create more inflammation in the body. For example, painkillers and steroids, they suppress the immune system functioning, creating more inflammation and pain in the long term. Similarly, surgery can remove the endometrial cyst and adhesion, but it doesn't really remove the root cause of the problem, which was inflammation, hormonal imbalance in the first place. That's why a lot of women experience recurrence of endometrial cyst and tissues around even after surgery. Ayurveda, on the other hand, prescribes natural and holistic treatment options that will help you to solve the root cause of your problem. Ayurvedic treatment options work on diagnosing an individual's specific imbalances so as to treat them in a holistic way with herbs, diet and lifestyle changes. This helps to provide long-term relief not only from the painful symptoms but also helps to establish the hormone balance and fertility in women. Ayurvedic treatment options go a long way in establishing health and vitality in the long term. Now before we dive into Ayurvedic natural ways to counter adenomyosis and endometriosis, let's try to understand what's causing the problem in the first place. So both of these disorders involve a lot of inflammation and buildup of toxins in the body. According to Ayurveda, excessive growth which happens in both adenomyosis and endometriosis involves an imbalance of kapha dosha and pitta dosha. For endometriosis in specific, there is involvement of vat dosha as well, which really leads to the retrograde flow of menstrual flow, thus providing seeds for endometrial cysts in the first place. In addition, women with endometriosis and adenomyosis also struggle with poor immune system function as their immune system is not naturally able to suppress the growth of these foreign tissues because they are not really growing in the normal place. This is abnormal growth which should have been stopped and killed by the immune system in the first place. When the immune system is weak, these endometrial cells can keep growing unabated as it is happening in your case. Also, poor immune system function leads to a lot of inflammation in the body. According to Ayurveda, the root cause of excessive growth as experienced in adenomyosis and endometriosis lies in toxin buildup or arm inside the body. 
आम इज अ थिक एंड क्वी सब्सटांस विच ब्लॉक्स द फ्लो ऑफ चैनल इट हैपन एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ पुअर डाइजेस्टिव फायर एंड पुअर लिवर फंक्शन वेन आम ब्लॉक्स द फ्लो ऑफ चैनल इट ऑल्सो डिस्टर्ब द दोषा फॉर एग्जाम्पल बात दोषा लीडिंग टू रेट्रोग्रो फ्लो ऑफ मैंस्ट्रुएशन इन केस ऑफ एंडोमेट्रियोसिस An imbalance in pitta dosha leads to hormonal imbalance issues such as estrogen dominance, low progesterone levels, and high estrogen levels, which also stimulates and fuels the reproductive organs, which are sensitive to the presence of estrogen. Also, an imbalance of kapha dosha inside the body leads to excessive growth in terms of weight gain and in terms of bulkiness of the uterus, and also in terms of oversized ovaries, presence of cyst. fibroids and all these abnormal growths which you are experiencing that's why ayurvedic treatment for endometriosis and adenomyosis begins with bringing balance inside the body ayurvedic treatment helps to detoxify the body to get rid of the toxin build up inside it helps to establish hormone balance and fertility of women ayurvedic treatment also helps to support immune system functioning in a normal way so as to reduce and remove the inflammation and thus pain inside the body Now let's look into specific ayurvedic ways that will help you to achieve all of this. So the first thing that you can do is to take support of ayurvedic herbs and medicines. These are plant-based herbal supplements that provide you with essential micronutrients and also have medicinal effect on the body. Ayurvedic herbs will help you to detox, to get rid of all the inflammation and toxin build up inside the body and also to shrink and remove all the endometrial cells which have invaded your uterus. Ayurvedic herbs also help to establish hormone balance and promote fertility in women they improve the egg quality and also regulate your menstrual cycle ayurvedic herbs are potent medicines that should be used under the guidance of an experienced ayurvedic doctor only you should not self medicate as it can cause more harm than benefit The second thing that you can do is to take in healthy foods that will provide you with essential nutrients such as zinc, selenium, vitamin A, E, C and D so that you are able to support your immune system function and also establish your hormone balance. Do take in freshly prepared meals that are consisting of natural foods that will help you to have a balanced meal and also make sure to get rid of all the processed inflammatory foods excess the use of chili sugar spice salt inside your meals which are creating more inflammation digestive issues and also suppressing your digestive fire when you improve your diet you give your body a chance to recover naturally from the foods that you are supplying it on regular basis a freshly prepared healthy meal also helps your digestive system to function well to secrete all the enzymes and juices at the right time so that you are able to digest that meal properly this will also remove all the digestive discomforts such as bloating stomach distension pain acidity and constipation symptoms that you are going through the third thing that you should do is to manage stress it has been observed that women with adenomyosis and endometriosis are experiencing a lot of emotional stress more so because of the pain that they are going through and also because of the hormonal imbalances that are present inside the body that's why it is really important to take care of your mental health to get rid of all the stresses that are further suppressing the functioning of your body in a natural way Do make sure to practice self-care by engaging in activities that help you to stay calm and relaxed. Surround yourself with people and engage in those activities which will recharge you, help you to stay strong in tough times. The fourth thing that you need to do is to get ample of rest and good sleep. It is very important for you because there is a lot of fatigue and stress inside your body. You are going through a lot of inflammation inside your body and it is already taxed. That's why it is really important to take sufficient rest and make sure that you are clocking in at least 6 to 8 hours of sleep in the night. When you are doing that, then you are also giving your body to a chance to detox because sleep is the time when body detoxification system is functioning it is getting rid of all the toxins from different parts of the body the circulatory system and the lymph system are draining all the bad cells out which should come out through urination and through bowel movement on regular basis good sleep also helps you to establish the hormone balance especially of the estrogen and progesterone and thus experience regular menstrual cycles and good fertility The fifth tip will be to manage weight and regularly exercise. 
If you are underweight, you should go for strength building activities that will help you to increase your muscle mass, gain strength inside the body and also balance your hormones. And if you are overweight, then focus on reducing the fat, specifically the belly fat which feeds in more estrogen inside the body. Reducing weight will not only help you to reduce the inflammation, the stress inside the body, it will also help you to get rid of excess estrogen and balance your hormones. If you have not been exercising regularly, then start with simple walks in nature. They are highly effective to reduce the stress, to build strength inside the body and slowly, slowly increase in intensity of exercises such that you are able to lose weight and also gain muscular mass, which is important for you to endure strength and fight fatigue. So that was all. I hope you found it helpful. Do write to me for any feedback, comments and questions. I'll get back to you. Do subscribe to Media Herbal's channel so that you stay updated with with latest Ayurvedic health tips that I post here and do like and share this video with all who will find it useful. I will see you soon in the next video. Until then, bye!